Yes, people, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are all doing well. So this is it. This is a pivotal weekend for Eric Ten Hag. Manchester United travel to Villa Park and it feels like a bad result could see the end of the current Manchester United manager. A man that I have been fully behind. I've wanted to be a huge success at Manchester United. When he came in from Ajax, I was so, so excited. His first season, getting third, getting a trophy. You're like, yes. This is what we want to see. Second season, a bit tumultuous. It's filled with injuries, filled with poor form, poor form and results as well. But we end it with a cup win. And you just think, go on, show me what you can do with a new structure, with some players in, and of course, some of those injured players back. Let's see what we can do. And the start to this season has been abysmal. Now, some may say he deserves at least till Christmas. He deserves at least to the end of the season. Let's see what he can do with this group of, um, you know, the board and everything that's above him. Let's see what they can do. Can they calm the storm? Can they see this out? Can they bring um, clarity, calmness and results to the club? Um, it needs to start at Villa Park, though, you feel. And we'll be getting stuck into some of the headlines. And of course, Sir Jim Ratcliffe has been speaking about Eric Ten Hag and his future as well. And we'll be looking at those quotes in this video too. Before you go anywhere though, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button, you're liking, you're commenting, you're sharing, all that stuff. Get your thoughts in the comments below and keep it locked to the channel. Now, Bruno Fernandes has been going through a difficult time. We discussed this yesterday on the channel and he said himself, this is a tough moment as a team and personally for me, one of the hardest. Almost five years at the club with ups and downs, good and bad moments, personally, I have always had challenges and adversities throughout my career and something that's never happened was that I go silent or hide myself from responsibilities in difficult moments. I know it sounds cliche and most of you United fans will be tired of it, but no one is more disappointed than myself with my own moment. Even through this moment, I appreciate all of you that had had positive messages of belief in me and the team. I, I truly believe Bruno Fernandes will regain his form again. Um, he has spells like this sometimes when Manchester United are performing badly and he gets frustrated and obviously things go wrong for him. It looks bad. But Bruno Fernandes is someone that can guarantee you goals, guarantee you assists and more often than not performs. That's the reality of it. I see people getting onto Bruno Fernandes and look, there are things to get onto him for and I think he's been bad this season, granted. But Bruno Fernandes, you know, he's, he, he has a baseline and he usually always meets that. And his baseline is usually very good as well. Bringing goals, bringing assists, creating chances for the club. Now, it's a frustrating time for him, the whole team, everybody. Nobody really looks good at the moment. And I think you're seeing a little bit of, you know, the, the, that frustration coming out in Bruno Fernandes' performances. Now, that's one of the things you can maybe criticise him of, of at times. It's because at times he gets a little bit emotional, very emotional. But then if you take that away from him, I think you lose the player that he is. Because I do think he's a fantastic player. On Manuel Ugarte, someone that should be one of his midfield partners. Ten Hag says he has to get used to our game model. He has to get used to his teammates. He has to get used to the intensity of Man United. In short, Ugarte needs time. Will Eric Ten Hag get that time with him? Remains to be seen. I understand that as well. He's coming from a different league, Sporting Lisbon to PSG, from the Portuguese league to the French league, now to the Premier League. It's a change of pace for him. Maybe he does need to be bedded in slowly, but he hasn't looked good thus far. And maybe that shows that Eric Ten Hag is right in that kind of thought and idea. Adam Crafton, the reliable Adam Crafton, has reported that Manchester United's decision makers are scheduled to meet in London on Tuesday as the scrutiny continues to grow on Eric Ten Hag. It's previously scheduled meeting. Um, Joel Glazer's also flying in and not known if first team performance is on the agenda. But you can be sure if Manchester United don't win against Aston Villa um, or don't get a good performance at the very least, then we will be seeing possibly a discussion about the manager at the very least at that meeting. It's the international break as well. And Fabrizio Romano has reported the game against Aston Villa could be really important for the future of Eric Ten Hag. I mean, it goes without saying at this point, doesn't it? Um, it, go, it goes without saying. I do think, you know, if we were to draw like we did against, um, who the bloody hell did we play midweek? Porto. If we were to draw... I think it's down to the performance again. That performance against Porto wasn't good enough. First 15 minutes, 20 minutes, maybe, but the rest of it, no. 
Um, and it was good to see us kind of hang in there and get a point with 10 men. But ultimately, the performance wasn't good enough. Um, and we threw away a two-goal lead. Now, let's get stuck into these Jim Ratcliffe comments. Uh, Manchester United's co-owner, Surgeon Ratcliffe, who was told our sports editor, Dan Rohn, uh, this is from the BBC's words, that a decision on Ten Hag's future is not his call. Asked if he has faith in the Red Devils boss, he said, I don't want to answer that question. Now, there's a lot more words that we're going to read out here, but I think that is telling in itself. Do you have faith in the manager? It's a simple question. It's a simple question. You could, you know, I don't want to answer that question. Seems a bit sitting on the fence, doesn't it? So we don't commit to himself. He does go on to say, I like Eric. I think he's a very good coach. But at the end of the day, it's not my call. It's the management team that's running Manchester United that have to decide how we best run the team in many different respects. But that's the team. that team that's running Manchester United has only been together since June or July. They weren't there in February, uh, January, February, March or April. Omar Barada, Dan Ashworth, they only arrived in July. They've only been there and you can count it in weeks almost. They've not been there a long time. So they need to take stock and make some sensible decisions. Our objective is very clear. We want to take Manchester United back to where it should be. And it's not there yet. Obviously, that's very clear. A non-committal answer from um, from the co-owner of Manchester United and the guy that's seemingly pulling the strings around the football operations at the moment. But obviously, he's brought in people that will make those footballing decisions or chip in and contribute to those football decisions. So he will obviously defer to also their opinions as well and not just his own. But let's not be kidding here. His opinion will carry weight. And if he doesn't think Eric Ten Hag's the right man or he's not pulling the weight or he's not getting the results or he's not going to get the results, then I'm sure he will have a big say in that decision. But I did find it very strange that he didn't really commit to, to backing the manager. Maybe I didn't find it strange. Maybe that's not the feeling. That. Maybe I found it quite telling um, that he didn't you know, outwardly back the manager. Um, and he kind of referred to how it's going to be a group decision, which of course it will be. That's why you bring these guys in, but still very, very telling nonetheless. So yeah, that's where we are with Surgeon Ratcliffe's thoughts on Eric Ten Hag and for all those rumours and things that you hear about the next game, well, the, the last two get like this game against Porto and the game against Villa coming up being pivotal after that Spurs defeat and the way we lost that game against Spurs, it kind of shows you, doesn't it, that that's probably true. Um, and with that meeting scheduled for Tuesday, um, if we don't see a result, we'll probably be seeing a change, which I hate the idea of, to be honest. I hope we go and batter Villa. And I hope Ten Hag turns this around, but if you ask me for my honest opinion, how I feel deep down, I don't think he will. And I think the, the result at Villa will be a bad one, unfortunately. They're a very good team and we're not playing at the moment. So, yeah. Anyway. Let us know your thoughts in those comments below. Make sure you like and comment and share and subscribe. And hope you've enjoyed the return uh, to regular content on the channel. I'm not going to make any promises, but I am going to try and keep it up. So make sure you're keeping it locked. See you in a bit.